first, thank you for the purchase of your Unichip ECU system, and congratulations on the purchase of your Ranger, Ranger Raptor, or Ford Everest. We hope you enjoy the benefits of the simple to use and easy to follow DIY instructions. Rich from Unichip Australia, we'll take it from here. G'day guys, Rich from Unichip Australia. Today I'm going to give you a run through on how to install a straight to sensor Unichip package to your 2 litre Ranger, Raptor or Everest. Alright, let's familiarise ourselves with the tools you're going to need to complete the job. You're going to need a flat and Phillips screwdriver, a 10mm socket, a 7 and a 10mm spanner, a pair of side cutters and something to punch a hole through the grommet to run the throttle cable through. Next, let's go through what you've received in the post for your, uh, your Unichip package. Basically what you've got here is a UniX module itself. Depending on what style of map select switch you've chosen to go with, you'll also find the bracket and of course the Unichip harness. Familiarise yourself with the Unichip harness to start with. You'll notice that there's three plugs on one end of it. These are going to stay in the engine bay and go to the three sensors on the engine. The other side of the harness here you'll notice there's a red wire with a fuse. That's going to go to your battery and there's a small white plug on the same side of the harness, which is going to go towards a throttle. Okay, now let's move on to the car. I've already completed the complex task of opening the bonnet. So as you can see, this one's up already. Once the bonnet's open, you gotta grab that 10 mil spanner we spoke about, undo that negative battery terminal. Now that the battery terminal has been successfully removed from the battery, what we notice on top of the engine, there's a, a foam engine cover which we're going to have to take off so that we can get to our sensors. The way we do that is simply lift it up. There's some hoses at the back which you sort of need to push out of the way, but with a little bit of persistence, the engine cover will pop off. Next thing we should do is familiarise ourselves with what sensors we're going to be going to. Luckily for us, they're all in close proximity to each other. So the first one you'll pick up on is this one here. This is called the fuel rail sensor. This is one of the plugs we're gonna to have to undo. Directly behind that, if we move these hoses out the way, you'll see that little vertical plug right there. That's the cam sensor. And the third and final sensor is on this side of the intake. On the side there, it's the map sensor. We need to get to, to all three of those. All right, with these sort of plugs, you'll notice there's a white tab in the middle of them. To release the plug, you need to slide the tab backwards, push the button in the middle, pull, the pl pull back on the plug to get it off. The cam sensor plug is the trickiest one to get to. It does face up like this. Again, same with the white tab. Pull the white tab back, push the button in, pull the cam sensor plug off. Oh, now that we've unplugged them all, let's grab the harness. As I mentioned earlier, the harness is split into essentially three different lengths. One goes to the map sensor, the other two go across to the engine, to the cam and the fuel rail sensor. So what we'll do, run the harness along the back of the engine. First and easiest one's the map sensor. So what we're going to do is going to plug the factory harness into this plug here and obviously the corresponding plug into the map sensor itself. Good. And push. Right, now that the map sensor's done, we're gonna move on to the two sensors on the engine. First one being that cam sensor, the tricky cam sensor we spoke about. Now, again, move the hoses out the way. Try and keep the harness neatly tucked in with the hoses themselves. Find your cam sensor plug in the harness, this one here. Plug that one into the cam sensor, and then obviously the corresponding plug for the cam sensor into the Unichip harness itself. All right, lastly, certainly not least, my personal favorite, the rail pressure, because so it's moot. Plug the, uh, plug the harness in, same way we've done the other ones. Obviously Unichip harness into the, uh, into the sensor, corresponding factory harness 
into the uni chip harness. Ah, all right. Next thing you need to do is make a hole in the grommet in this left-hand back corner for your throttle wires to go through. Now, what I've got is a snap-on, a specific snap-on tool for punching holes through grommets. You can get this from any snap-on agent, $27,500. Once you've made a hole in your grommet, what you'll need is a piece of wire, coat hanger, anything like that to poke through the hole so you can pull the harness through. Okay, grab the throttle harness. This has to come from the inside of the cabin out, obviously with the smaller plug. So run your wire through the firewall, tape it to your harness and pull it back through into the engine bay. This white plug itself is going to plug into the corresponding white plug on the Unichip harness. Right, now that we've done all the sensors that we need to for the Unichip harness, what we're gonna do is connect the positive side of the battery. So, as I mentioned earlier, red wire with a terminal on it. Locate the little M6 post here on the positive battery terminal. Undo the nut. Slip the terminal on. Put the nut back on and tighten it up. Okay, so you've been supplied with a universal Unichip mounting bracket. Now essentially this can be mounted wherever it will fit. We have got an idea of where to put them if your engine bay is pretty much standard. So mount the uni chip onto the bracket like this using the supplied M5 screw and nut combination. Now you would have also noticed we've supplied a little sachet of lube. This isn't for your next camping adventure. What we're going to do is we're going to put it on the uni chip itself. It's going to prevent any corrosion. Righto. Now we're ready to plug the Unichip harness into the Unichip itself. The two black plugs are different sizes, so you can't mix them up. But essentially, just make sure you plug them in nice and square and they will click into place. Okay, if you've gone for our Bluetooth map select option with your kit, this is the time to plug the Bluetooth module in. You'll notice there's one six pin plug in the middle of the Unichip there. That's where the Bluetooth module plugs into. Little side note, if you've gone with the in-cab map select switch like this one here in my hand, that plug here is on the harness. If you didn't go for it, just leave that plug tucked away. Run the harness through the firewall the same way I showed you to do the throttle. Mount it anywhere you like inside the cab. With all the plugs plugged in, including the Bluetooth, if you've grabbed one, push the lid down towards the chip itself. And using the supplied little self tappers with the Allen keys, secure the lid down with that. Now that's nice and secured, give me a thumbs up. Right, time to mount the uni chip. Now, like I mentioned earlier, the bracket we've designed is meant to go just here on this body clip. So the easiest thing to do is pop this body clip out, gives you a hole to run the supplied nut and bolt through to secure the bracket. Righto, final thing to do guys, secure the Unichip harness along the factory wiring harness along the back of the engine there and up here at the Unichip itself using the supplied zip ties. Right, stick the engine cover back on, reconnect that negative battery and you're good for 5,000 horsepower. Thanks for watching guys, I'm Rich from Unitive Australia, signing off, enjoy the drive. As you can tell, I just got back from uh, road testing this Everest, fitted with a uni chip. Don't tell anyone, dragged off a couple of club sports, you know it is, uni chip power, rock on fellas.